from judges in the courtroom to counselors in the mental health system. DeMarcus Brinkley encountered many state officials throughout his life. Had any of them handled his prior cases differently? Miriam's family believes she might still be alive today. That's why they created this document. It contains a number of initiatives. They're calling it Miriam's Law, and they're looking for a state lawmaker to sponsor it. Miriam Abdelrab was always creating. She loved drawing, she was an amazing artist. Today those sketches and this community mural memorializing her life is all her baby brother Ali has left. She probably didn't know it while she was here, but I definitely looked up to her. After her late night bartending shift, Miriam stopped at a gas station. Police told Miriam's family it appeared she was spotted there randomly and followed. Then, surveillance video captures the moments she gets to her boyfriend's house. Seconds later, another car pulls up. That's when a man approaches Miriam and forces her into his car, all while Miriam's boyfriend watches helplessly. Oh my God, bro, I just watched her get kidnapped from in front of my house. She had a gun pointed to her? Yes, I watched it all through my window in my front yard. He had a gun to her and he forced her into a car. Four hours after that panicked 911 call, Miriam was found dead with multiple gunshot wounds. In the weeks that followed, her family was overcome with grief. Then as more details came out, the trauma intensified. I kind of broke down. I like fell down to my knees. What happened to my sister was preventable. CBS 46 investigates dug into DeMarcus Brinkley's history and uncovered a schizophrenia diagnosis and a record of violent crimes. According to Fulton County Court documents, Brinkley was accused of raping a seven-year-old girl in 2012. Then in 2013, he was found on top of a naked six-year-old girl. In 2015, he pled guilty to child molestation, attempted rape, and cruelty to children. The state recommended he serve 15 years in prison, followed by 15 years on probation. Instead, Brinkley was sentenced to 15 years total, seven in prison, followed by eight on probation. He'd also have to register as a sex offender. But when Brinkley was released in 2020, that's when we found that he never received a risk level assessment. That's when offenders are designated tier one, two, or three, depending on their risk level for sexual reoffense. If you go on the sex offender registry website, it says not leveled on his name still. He's right. We took these findings to the executive director of the Georgia Sex Offender Registration Review Board, who blamed a backlog for offenders not getting leveled, which she says is, quote, due to understaffing and a lack of funds. Unlike some states where sex offenders are leveled on the day of their sentencing, Georgia levels sex offenders when they are released from prison. To this day, our communities are at risk. And that's where the family says Miriam's law comes into the picture by one, requiring sex offenders who have not received a risk level assessment to be fitted with an ankle monitor. Once they are leveled, tier three offenders would be required to wear the monitor for the duration of their sentence, while tier one and tier two offenders could have them removed. And two, requiring sex offenders to carry an ID card with a specific symbol that is recognizable to law enforcement. There might be more Demarcus Brinkley's out there and we don't want this to happen to anybody else. Should Miriam's law move forward, it's likely that it will face some legal challenges. In 2019, the Georgia Supreme Court struck down a law that required lifetime ankle monitoring of high-risk sex offenders. And as far as ID cards, which disclose sex offender status, critics in other states have called them a modern-day scarlet letter. Still, CBS 46 investigates found at least eight states that have such cards. I'm going to vote for victim. The family has also received support from State Representative Misha Maynor and Atlanta Councilwoman Keisha Waits. I am very sensitive to an individual's privacy. I understand that. However, when it comes to a level three and only a level three offender, I think the dynamics are different. I think it's about the greater public good. And I think in this particular case, I think had we had something like that in place, we could have tracked this individual, we could have monitored him and perhaps saved her life. A legislative lifeline that could provide protection for years to come. It will be a part of her legacy. A legacy. Murals are nice, but the family hopes. I think if less tragedies happen, we'll go beyond the many scribed sentiments and into Georgia state law. That'd be the goal. Demarcus Brinkley was indicted on nine felony counts for the death of Miriam Abdelrab, including murder, kidnapping, and attempted rape. His trial is scheduled for early October. As for Miriam's law, well, it still needs a sponsor in the General Assembly. Then it needs to be pre-filed before session begins in January. Of course, I will be watching this closely. Rachel Polanski, CBS 46 News.